Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Today I'm talking about uh, the month in Trump, March 2017. What a month. See now it's not been as big in regards to the um, the huge bombastic things that, that we've seen him do in the last couple of months where he's he's exploded in different ways but this month has still been a cavalcade of, of bizarre happenings and things that have not gone uh, well or things that have gone interestingly um, you know between stuff like him shredding um, the uh, various bits and pieces from Obama's um, kind of climate change and, and environmental protections um, so that he can just basically do whatever he wants because he doesn't believe climate change is a thing because he's insane um, and then making his his daughter Ivanka an actual aide like uh, assistant to the president or whatever um, you know which is again the, the, the nepotism is real yeah, as much as she's unpaid as much as Jared Kushner her husband is also a senior aide to Trump and he's unpaid you know as much as as that's the case it doesn't matter if they're unpaid they're still getting an awful lot of power and and, and influence in there aren't they you know you've you've got that thing um that's that's kind of sat there and yet yeah, I feel like there are a few things that stand out this month more so than that both from Trump and the people around him the that are uh, far more substantial to talk about than just things that we kind of knew he was going to try and do anyway like getting rid of those uh, environmental protections and rather unsurprisingly trying to only involve his family like some kind of mob boss um and the first one of those is trump care and it's like looking at looking at it and listening to the things that have been said about it it's in no way no surprise to me that it failed that it fell through that it broke that it was crap yeah listening to the things that they were saying about it listening to um i think his name is something chavez maybe chaffetz something like that who who went on and started suggesting that people shouldn't just go and frivolously spend money on an iPhone, but instead should be uh, putting that money towards the healthcare, even though the cost, the prices, the price difference between those two things is so huge that they can't be compared. Um, you know, uh, trying to focus on some kind of credit angle, which basically turns healthcare um, into a, a kind of place that the rich can hide money, but it still doesn't help people who don't have the money to put into it in the first place. Um, you know there, there are a lot of problems with it and so rather unsurprisingly it failed when it when it went to discussion when it when it was put forward it, it fell through and it fell through in part due to um, to one extent or another apparently the Freedom Caucus who are apparently quite excessively right-wing but not Tea Party standards of right-wing necessarily but they're all very safe Republican seats they're all very uh, strong um, Kind of long-term Republican individuals and uh, as a result Trump after blaming everybody apart from himself for the failure of the bill the same way that he did with his his um, immigration ban the first time and the second time it was blocked um, he blames everyone after this and then he goes out and he actively has this little Twitter tirade again like some 10 year old who's got a mobile phone and who's been allowed to use Twitter and just wants to get everything off his chest online because he's some kind of crazy like I mean a, a 10 year old child complaining non-stop about these things I could kind of understand a fully grown adult doing these kind of things for no reason whatsoever is it boggles the mind you know um, it just demonstrates that he's a shitty manager he's a shitty leader you know he's not leading by example he's not taking responsibility he's not um, uh, communicating well all he's ever communicating is either stuff that he's told to say or stuff that, that is just him being angry at people you know um, he's sweating all the small stuff he's not trying to deal with things as it comes he's he's worried about um, the number of people at his inauguration or the number of, of, of news outlets that he can argue with 
you know he's concerned about those things he's not concerned about these actual issues that he needs to come and deal with and so you know when he then turns around and he says that they have to fight the, the republican party including himself have to fight the freedom caucus this group that in part seem to have opposed him who are very safe strong republicans that that have some kind of um kind of big role because otherwise they wouldn't have been um continually re-elected in by landslides in some situations within their their states and constituencies as it were um you know considering all of that he then goes that they don't have to they don't only have to fight democrats but they also have to fight the freedom caucus within their own party in the next election in like 2018 or, or whenever their midterms are yeah i believe it's 2018 and so he's 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 literally not just looking to attack everybody other than him he's looking to attack even elements that are very closely attached to him that actually probably helped him get where he is and it's it again boggles the mind i don't understand how how he can be quite this thick but moving on from that there have been comments from other people around the things that that trump has been doing of late um including those from speaker of the house paul ryan who uh who came out he did a i believe he did a um had a little conversation not too long ago and he said two things that really stood out to me um one of which was to do with health care and one of which was to do with um the whole russia thing which we'll also get onto again in a minute but we'll talk about the healthcare thing first and the first thing he said was he didn't want to in any ne any way negotiate with democrats on healthcare excuse me um he doesn't want to 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 do that he doesn't want um, to try and agree or, or arrange that with members of the opposition uh, in spite of the fact that they've already had a failure they've had a huge number of people from the public as well come out against them at town halls and things like that to actively say don't repeal it or replace it in some daft way make the system better just just improve it bring it up to the standard of all the other places that have socialized health care you know pl just make it work and he said, he said, no, we're not going to do that. We don't want to negotiate with the, the Democrats or negotiate with anybody. We just want to do it by ourselves. And this is what he said. He says, this is a can-do president who's a business guy, which is debatable, um, who wants to get things done. And I know that he wants to get things done with the Republican Congress. But if the Republican Congress allows the perfect to be the enemy of the good, I worry we'll push the president into um, working with the Democrats. He suggested as much, and it's like, well, no, hold on. This isn't. This is an issue that affects everyone in the United States. Everyone who will ever need health care within your country. If anything, this is something that should be discussed with the Democrats. It should be worked with on a, by other people. If Trump is saying that maybe it would be a good idea to work with them, then why don't you go and do it? give it a chance because it will affect everybody what he's saying is that tribalism wins out and it's not about health care it's not about keeping people safe and healthy it's about getting their way and keeping their boss on side and this is the problem with politics at the moment this is the problem with um these individuals who are focused on their career focused on their well-being on getting their way on getting their side through, you know to to win and it's not about the public it's not about the people that put them in that position in the first place you know when they step forward and especially in in um the western world where we have very very um kind of substantial government that is made up of elected individuals and things like that you know this is where the problems lie this is where we have the issues with our countries it's it's the split down the middle the tribalism the anger between one place and another the arguments that that could be easily resolved by normal people who would sit down and have a talk about it and get through to the other end of it and make a decision um it's it's these people aren't willing to do that simply because they are too focused on 
it's our side that has to win. It's us that has to win, not them, us. And it's only ever going to be damaging. And it's only ever going to bring them failure, which is part of the problem uh, they're having at the moment. But then the second thing will lead on to what I'm talking about in a second. And obviously we've had all this stuff about Trump and Russia. And we've had that an awful lot. And, and how you've got Trump and a lot of his people saying that, oh no, there's no connection, you don't have to worry about it, it's, it's, it's all fake news, it's bollocks and all the rest of it. But then you've got Paul, How Paul Ryan, as said, Speaker of the House, coming in and saying this. He says that, so the nation, the world superpower, the American government, needs to do everything we possibly can, not only to undercut what they are trying to do, but to uncover what they are trying to do, and help our allies prevent this from happening. Because with Russia trying to influence elections in Eastern Europe and Europe, around the globe, I think we have a special responsibility given our capabilities to make sure we help our allies guard against this meddling by Russia in their elections, just like they tried with our election. So hold on a second. This is the Speaker of the House, a couple, like two, uh, two steps down from the President of the United States, going, we know that they've been influencing. We've got this information that suggests they've been influencing. We know that they, they even impacted us. And now, though, we have to acknowledge that and then we have to try and protect people. But then at the same time, you've got Trump going off and saying that there's nothing to it, it doesn't matter, there's no none of this other bit none of this other stuff that's going on. And then of course that brings up Mike Flynn again, who was the the uh, individual who was removed from Trump's cabinet um, after he essentially lied to the FBI and whatever else about his uh, his dealings with Russia and conversations that he that he had had. And um, it's his it, it's it's again really really odd that you're having these different people say all these different things. But in regards to Mike Flynn, he's said that he will testify um, on the Russian allegations through or you know during the the hearings uh the security council hearing hearings and things like that that they've got going on over there at the moment the investigation into trump the the trump staffers that are involved i believe there are like seven of them that are under investigation um trump himself and his dealings and and other bits and pieces you know there, there's a lot of 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 stuff there but he's saying that he will he will testify but only if he's granted immunity now, there are lots of people who've, who've um, taken a look at this and gone, oh, well, if he's, if he's asking immunity for immunity from potentially everybody, then that means that he's, he may very well have the dirt. You know, he's, he's, he's going to throw this stuff out there. And I'm like, no, not necessarily. There are, I think there are, like, because the, the thing that his, um, his lawyer said was that he has a story to tell and, he's, and the immunity is there to guard him against unfair per, uh, prosecution. Now... If he's fucked up, which he has, and he's done things that are illegal, like lying to the FBI, which he has, then he should be up for prosecution anyway. That sounds pretty fair. But if you grant him immunity, then that means that he's um, he potentially gets out scot-free, and he'll take the immunity before he testifies, I would imagine. And his, he could testify one of three ways, I, I figure. Firstly, he could tell the story that everyone is suggesting that he probably has to tell in regards to um, how, yes, there were there were some bits and pieces going back and forth with Russia. Yes, there was some involvement and communication with Russia before um, Trump was made president. And as a result, it was kind of undermining the current presidency, the, uh, the one president at a time thing that, that's been brought up a few times now. You know, there's that. He could go... There was some involvement. I have seen some things. I, I had some dealings with myself, um, but they weren't this, that, and the other, and, and it doesn't involve Trump and so on and so forth. But now I've taken the immunity, and so, and I've, I've dished the dirt on these other people, so now I'm getting off scot free. Or he goes in and says exactly what he said before, minus the lies that have already been completely highlighted. And as a result, no new information comes to pass. No new interesting things happen. 
nothing of worth occurs and yet he's still granted the immunity because he did testify and so he gets out scot-free and that's going to be a really interesting thing to observe because whether you've got um, these these links with Russia between Flynn and between these staffers and between Trump and whether or not it, it you know you've got Paul Ryan suggesting that and and a huge number of people within the US security community suggesting that Russia did have an impact on the uh, on the election you know you've you've got all of that going on and it's a case of well if if all of these people are admitting to this if all of these people are acknowledging this but then you've got this investigation going on and Trump's saying that you you know that there isn't anything connecting him and it's all just a, a, a witch hunt on Flynn and on him and on everybody else by the media and the Democrats because they lost the election which sounds like bollocks to me because the media win either way whoever gets in they win you know it doesn't matter one way or the other really um, you know, they will always have someone someone or something to report on, they will always have someone or something to criticise, they will always have something to do. And so, you know, there, there are outlets that have maybe had more questionable uh, things to say that have then been fact-checked and, fact -checked and found to be maybe not 100% accurate. But, you know, the, the witch hunt here doesn't seem to be so much a witch hunt, considering that you've got like proper um, full hearings you know by the Senate Intelligence Committee on um, the the Russians apparently you know seeking to hijack in some way the US election and so I don't really have much more to say on on this one apart from it will be interesting to see Firstly, if they award the immunity to Mike Flynn, and secondly, whether or not he acts on it in one of the three ways that I've said, or provides something else. Um, but ultimately, this month has been a, a month of failure for, for Trump, and to a degree, quite rightly so, but unfortunately, that just seems to fill him with more anger and more fervor to try and achieve more. and with people like Ryan, like, uh, Paul Ryan um, is, is still there, sat with him offering comments as, as he did, it's an interesting thing because nothing seems to add up and it all seems to relate back to tribalism or greed or selfishness or just plainly stupidity, you know, as with Mike Flynn here who, uh, who's, you know, gone and lied to the FBI and, and caused all manner of problems around himself but hey anyway thank you very much for watching guys i hope you found this interesting not as much inflammatory and, and exciting stuff um this time if you haven't checked it out already check the f rest of my month in review which i did uh in yesterday's afternoon video um so take a look at that and otherwise thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the video tomorrow take care Thank you very much for watching guys, if you found this at all interesting then please drop me a like and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care.